90.5 the night brookdale public radio jeff raspy here with you this afternoon and i am joined by our old friends jackson pines joe and james from jackson pines welcome good evening Nor- uh, normally <laughs> normally even though even though joe you kind of moved to philadelphia um <laughs> we uh we've we've over the years we've had many visits live in the studio but uh we're, we're, we're still not doing that. So here we are through the uh, magic of the internet. Uh, and uh, you guys have, uh, I guess, like a lot of, a lot of artists who have sort of been in a holding pattern for over a year now. Uh, you're finally getting to play some shows. Uh, you put out an album earlier this year, so you finally get to play those songs. <laughs> And stuff like that. So I guess first question is how how did and it's funny because it, over the last several months I've asked a number of people like how did some people it was in their nature to like put their head down and start working, write songs, record a record that you wouldn't have otherwise, and stuff like that. And other people, um, for instance, uh, I saw uh, Kaylee Goldsworthy actually from Philadelphia uh, the other night at Crossroads in Garwood and she was just like, yeah, everyone was expecting me to like spend the entire lockdown writing songs. And I was like, no. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, at first it seemed like the last thing that was possible was to focus on something like, you know, our own songs or like the next thing we wanted to do, because at the time, you know, talking about March, April, 2020, there was a lot more important stuff going on than our own songs and what we were going to do next. So I understand and uh, I can sympathize with that feeling. Uh, We eventually got back to it, of course. But yeah, in the beginning, we kind of just went into a holding pattern. Like you said, um, there were some projects that really helped keep us going and push us through. Uh, For example, like in... April and May of 2020, uh, I was asked if we would donate a recording to a compilation where each compilation would fund the next one. Mm -hmm. So like we did ours, we just donated ours. But once that was on Bandcamp for Bandcamp Friday, um, we were able to, you know, the guy who orchestrated that was a DJ from Philadelphia named Fred Nattel. He works for Folkways Records now. He's in D.C., but he was in Philly at the time. And we were a part of that. And the money that was donated helped pay the artist on the second one. And the second one helped pay the artist on the third one and so forth. And that was where one of the songs on our new album, which is called Close to Home, I first recorded it right here, right on the other side of this wall in a little like nook area I have in my apartment. Um, And that's the song Half Light, which is now a full band version on our new record, Close to Home. But at the time, it's just me in the office alone. James plays a little synthesizer in the background. Um, But that was the first thing we did since it started like two or three months earlier. Little projects like that helped push us forward, get everything kind of going again. The second one was a festival we were asked to be a part of, um, the Philadelphia Folk Festival, but it wasn't in person. So we were asked to make a video. And that was the first time we got the full band together ever. So it took quarantining, it took timing everything out. This was August of 2020. We were able to get together for one day outside and make this long form video. Uh, It's like a five song set that you can find on YouTube. Uh, And those two projects definitely helped push us back into doing it after not doing anything. I didn't see James. I saw him like three or four times last year. It was insane (laughs) because me and James normally are together almost every day of the year, so. Right, yeah. And, it, um, yeah. It was a weird, a lot of touch and go stuff, you know, one day at a time, you know. Well, Can't yeah, that's, out. I mean, that ultimately that's what it was. It was, you know, one day at a time. And, right. you know, unfortunately, everybody kind of wanted, you know, the whole thing to be over or, you know, some sort of final plan right. to get out of it in a day. And it's, that's not how science works. I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. So, But we got through the year and then we were able to make the record early this year so we're just really happy that we were able to to figure out how to do it technically you know yeah yeah and and, because i mean everything under the sun was done over the last year and a half 
people who normally mm -hmm. have a band made a record on their own. Mm -hmm. Bands who couldn't do that made a record remotely. Like, you know, yeah. one person would, would do a part and send it off to the next person who'd add a part, and then the next person would add a part. Um, that's funny because uh, earlier this summer, I, I chatted with uh, Cranston Dean, who I know you guys know. Yeah. And oh, yeah. So he kind of did the opposite of what you guys did. Like you, you dealt with all the quarantining to try and get everybody together. Right. He couldn't get his band to, to like schedule their quarantines in the right order for them to go record an album. So he just went up to Maine and made a record all by himself playing Absolutely. guitar and drums and, you know, stuff like that. He played almost everything himself on that yeah. record. Uh, and I got to say, I mean, I'm just going to quickly actually have it right here. Um, <laughs> highly suggest everyone go and find online or in person When It Rains by Cranston Dean because it's like, honestly, one of my top three albums of the year by anybody. So just a little plug for Cranston. <laughs> and yeah, he did yeah. it by himself. We did the opposite, though. You're right. right. Yeah. Um, so what we did was we somehow actually put back together a band of friends of ours from our hometown of Jackson that we've been playing with on and off since we were 15. So somehow we kind of did the opposite thing, but we got everyone to promise that after New Year's Eve, you could do whatever you want on New Year's Eve, but then you had to take three weeks and chill. And everyone agreed to do that and quarantine and test. And we were able to actually just record the album in February uh, in three days. And then again, we all went away from each other for months and had to kind of relearn the album this spring again. But it was a really cool experience to be able to do it. And we're just really lucky that everyone was willing to do this journey with us mm -hmm. all the way from, yeah, quarantine testing and doing it in three days. So the whole album was recorded in 24 hours over the course of three days, um, three eight hour sessions live in the room that James is sitting in right now, actually. Um, and after that, it was post editing on Zoom. Me and Roshane Karun Rotney, uh, you know, longtime uh, collaborator with us in many bands. Um, you know, we did the post editing, you know, cropping things, just getting it all right in line on Zoom. And then it was mastered and mixed remotely with a great buddy of ours, Pete Hanlon in Woodstock. We're just so glad that they were all willing to try to work differently. And we are actually just as happy with the product as anything we've put out, if not more. So it's testament to all of them engineers and the the people on the technical side yeah it might, it might yeah instrument. yeah it might even be more just because of what everyone had to go through to make it happen it was a lot of hard work on the part of james turbin santo rizlo Roe, james me and you know everybody that was around and not around through the yeah. internet you know <laughs> and in three months though we put it together so we're really happy to be able to play the songs now like you said it you know some some shows that we're very excited about uh, yeah, which we will talk about in a moment. Um, and I, I wanted to uh, bring up the new album, Close to Home, which I guess technically came out earlier this summer. Uh, July, technically. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was going to make mention of the fact that it is a full band, um, whereas I guess over the last few years since uh, you guys started Jackson Pines post Thomas Wesley Stern, I, and I may be mis remembering this more often than not especially live it's just the two of you yeah the nucleus of the band is me and james and it's always been but over the course of our first album there was a couple full band songs uh, we were lucky enough to have simon felice and his brother james kind of be our backing band just on that album uh, we always wanted to try to be mainly a duo a transitioning from a band that was much bigger before um, but we definitely in the eps we released over the last three years we're always working more drums, more bass and piano uh, into the works of the arrangements. Um, but yeah, for this album, we definitely wanted to have a lot more fullness to the sound just because the songs seem to need it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure, James, you could talk about, you know, kind of why we wanted to do that as well. Yeah, it just kind of seems like the next, uh, just climbing the ladder, you know, we kind of, we didn't want to stray too far from what, you know, our sound and what we do, but we just wanted to jazz it up a little, you know, keep things interesting for us and everybody else listening, you know, so. For sure, yeah. And mm -hmm. so um, for the shows that are coming up, which I did say we were going to talk about, 
You've got Tuesday, the 12th of October at Asbury Lanes, opening for the Fleece Brothers. Um, yeah, now, yeah, we're really excited now, about that. And and in my head, I'm seeing that as a full band show. Is it going to be? It is. Okay. Yes. So it'll be as the album is mostly a five-piece band, and that would be what our set is uh, supporting them, warming up the crowd that night. Uh, and so it's exciting. You know, they helped us with our first record, a couple of them. Uh, and we saw them two years ago, we opened for them, and now them asking us to do it a second time is kind of like the thing that makes it feel, you know, a little more like, okay, we didn't mess it up the first time, we still want us to play with them, so it's kind of exciting for that reason. So, it, um, and so yeah, we'll have the you, full band. So you guys were requested to play this show? Uh, we, we got the call from, you know, the, the lanes asked and said that the band was interested, and we said yeah, so... Cool. Sounds like a plan to us. So, and this was a show booked for 2020. This is a rebook, and not every show is a rebook, but this was yeah. a rebook. So we thought when we saw they were playing the lanes, we assumed all right, they got different opening acts and stuff. But we reached out to the management and said, "No, you're still on it." And we were like, "All right, great, we'll see you there." <laughs> and uh, yeah, that'll be Tuesday the 12th. We'll be open up for them. And, yeah, because uh, I, I, Allison uh, Olender I, as well opening. What, as well. what was that? Allison Olender is also opening the show. She's oh. on tour with them. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I, I wanted to um, make mention of the fact that um, not only had you guys opened for them before, but as you alluded to, uh, you had uh, you had the Felice brother, who's not in the Felice brothers, work on a record with you a few years ago. Right, our first record. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of helped us kick off the whole thing. Um, and through him, we met James, who played piano and accordion. And then from knowing him now a little bit, you know, just as acquaintances, um, is why we played with them two years ago and now again. And uh, the Lanes is a, you know, a place that sounds really, really good. So I'm excited to hear their new music. Their new album as well is incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, from Dreams to Dust, uh, Jazz on the Audubon is a great single. So we're excited to hear the new stuff live for sure. Yeah, we've, we've uh, you've probably heard it on 90.5 the last few weeks, Jazz on the Audubon. I actually Autobahn. did. Yes, I just like saying Autobahn. Into practice. <laughs> I mean, this. I mean, they always had great lyrics, but some of the best lyrics they've ever had. This album, so it's just a testament to them not stopping. It's really inspiring to us because we grew up listening to Frankie's Gun on ninety point five when we were teenagers, and now we're opening for them. So it's kind of it's sweet, you know. Oh yeah, um, and then the next night, you're playing uh, one eighteen North outside Philly and Wayne PA. And, and before we started this conversation, Joe, you and I were talking about um, that venue because I didn't know it was a venue or uh, if it was a house, like, is that an address <laughs> to somebody's house? Yeah. Um, and, and, you, and you actually, you, you told me something really interesting that uh, you guys have joined uh, kind of this, I don't want to call it a support group, but it's, <laughs> a group and the point of the group is to help bands like you at your level right. to uh connect with and get a, a foot in the door with a lot of things that you probably wouldn't have been able to you know you know cold calling kind of thing right yeah i mean we are a you know do-it-yourself diy band in the truest sense i mean we don't have, you know, a manager or a PR person or a booking agent. We do it all ourselves. Me and James are all of those roles. Um, so yeah, the Americana Music Association. We are now members of that, you know, wonderful group of artists who all play music influenced by, you know, early blues, jazz, folk, and rock and roll. Um, and now that we're under their flagship a little bit, you know, or we're first year members, <clears throat> we can through the access um people who book shows at places for the kind of music we play more easily uh so that's the first show we booked since we kind of came under their radar um and it's the people who used to run the tin angel in philly which was a very famous loud ah. um, so this is not the people who run 18 north wayne but this is the person who got my email through american association who they were running the locks which is a singer songwriter place yep. in philly that's now defunct unfortunately and they hooked us up with that so yeah we're glad to be able to expand back you know playing in the philly area which we did until about you know a year ago uh so it's good to be back and to 
fill in these regional gigs before next year when we take it back on the road. Yeah. So, so James, do you get the feeling that that Philly shows are just so Joe doesn't have to travel so far? <laughs> well, we we balance them out. You know, we play some <laughs> Jackson shows and uh, around here, and then we do a few by him. So we we try and keep it even. <laughs> so yeah, it's not a bad hike in... though. I mean, man. You time it right. You can be. I can be at Joe's in an hour and change. I mean, so you can. It's good. It's and it's a nice ride too. You know, kind of scenic. Okay. So. Yeah, and so we got. We're figuring it out though. (laughs) We'll be there on the thirteenth in Wayne. We'll be in Philly in November, but you know, that's a whole nother line of promotion. Yeah, Um, and then later that. Yeah, I guess it is later that same week. Uh, Same week. Saturday the 16th at the Allaire Jamboree, 3 o'clock in the afternoon that Saturday afternoon. And I'm going to guess that is uh, in Allaire State Park. Yep, Allaire State Park. Our great friend, uh, Chris Krebs, who's been putting on music mm-hmm. in the Monmouth County area for about almost 10 years now. Um, is his, It's the third or fourth. He's done this you know, every four or five months uh, since it was safe to do outdoor stuff when COVID started. Um, and we play at three. We're the last group. So it starts at noon. Oh. And it's uh, $15, uh, five for children. And it all goes toward Alaire State Park and everything, the historical society there. Um, we're all donating our time to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Family and friends are playing. Uh, the Doyle brothers are going to play. We're great friends of ours. Casey Baker is going to play. Mm-hmm. Um, some of my family might play right now up in the air, but there's a good <laughs> chance of that. There's a folk jam going on. And we're going to close it out at 3 o'clock, so it's going to be a really fun time. If you're more into the daytime outdoor folk vibe, uh, that's for you. And if you're into the indoor rock show, indie folk vibe, then the lanes is for you. That's Absolutely. Um, so uh, I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted to go back to um, uh, you, the relationship you guys have with uh, a Felice brother not the Felice brothers, uh, mm-hmm. but Simon Felice, right. the, the, the brother who I, I jokingly earlier said is, he's the brother who's not in the Felice brothers. <laughs> Anymore. Anymore, yes. Right. But it's had been, been over 10 years probably. Yeah, well, he had been for his whole life, but <laughs> he wasn't actually, you know, yeah. really still is a brother. He's just not in the band, Sorry. the Felice brothers anymore. <laughs> um Man. Uh, and he produced, like you said, your your Purgatory Road record. The fir- uh, that was the first Jackson Pines project, yeah. first first thing ever, and the first full length. Which was so yeah. this is only our second full length, even though we put out a couple EPs and singles in between. Yeah, so um, three years in the middle. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we may or may not have talked about this live in the studio at the time. Um, how did you and Simon Felice end up uh, connecting? Because he. I mean, he's a songwriter, he's a touring musician, mm-hmm. he's a musician in and of his own right. Um, but I guess over the last handful of years, he's really dug in his heels and become a producer of note. Yeah. Um, and, and some pretty high profile <laughs> records. Yeah. Um, how did you guys connect with him and, and try? I mean, was it just, uh, you know, you know, hi, we're a band from New Jersey, would you like to re- produce our record it was a simple twist of fate for lack of a better phrase honestly i mean we grew up you know being teenagers in jackson listening to you know 90.5 and everything and hearing the felice brothers and followed them for years and around the time that thomas wesley stern decided to go and try different things and you know move to different cities and do whatever we wanted to do um was just around that time that, yeah, we kind of heard through the grapevine that Simon was open to producing bands. And he had done it a little bit when he was still mainly pursuing his solo career after he left the Felice Brothers, which he just released a new single, which is awesome. He's going to play a big show in New York and a big show in London in the next couple months. Um, And he's also the producer of the new Lumineers album, which is about Mm -hmm. to drop. Um, And at that time, he had just recorded their second album, um... Cleopatra Mm -hmm. and it wasn't out yet so we found out that there was a way to contact him and you know 
cold calling, you know, we talked about this before, Jeff. It works, you know, almost never of the time. <laughs> but also, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, a la Wayne Gretzky. Mm-hmm. And this was one time Wait, where... I thought that was a Michael Scott quote. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is a time where we actually got a call... And it was literally just him on the phone, called my cell phone number back. And it just all went from there and said, yeah, let's do it. You want to do it in four or five months? Come up to the Catskill Mountains. And we spent 10 days working on 10 songs. We literally did one song a day and spent that much time focusing on every song and editing it together, you know, as a producer, songwriter team, me and James and him. And we're still super proud of that material and we still play it every single show. two full lengths but we still lean heavily on that material mm-hmm. because it's it's us it's it's what we uh everything we do now is sprung from those ideas they just might sound different and have different chords and lyrics but we learned a lot from him and from pete spending those two weeks with him up there in july yeah and that's awesome you know that's that's proof that if it like you said if if you don't ask you you'll never get a yes Right. You, you may still get a won. no, but you'll never get a yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, James, like, we pulled up there. It was just a little surreal. Like, you remember pulling up to that, up the hill? Yeah, it was uh, pretty wild, especially just from, like, the impact their band had on us growing up. And I'm like, we're walking up to this big, beautiful barn with, you know, like a big chimney out the side and big barn door up, up top and so I'd walk in, he's just sitting in a chair and like, you really got to like play right now. I like couldn't even like, it was intense. I mean, for me, it was intense. I mean, it was like pretty, I was like, can't believe I'm doing this right now. But, and then like, after we got into it, it was like really one of the best uh, recording experiences I've ever had. So, but yeah, it was wild. It was a lot of fun. Oh, I bet. Really. We're used to too. Like we did a, so our old album in Jersey city, we were all kind of like, 
it was great experience too. We were all kind of locked in there. You go out, get food real quick, come back. And this, like, we'd do a song and you'd be like, all right, let's go take a walk. We'd go walk down by the river and then come back and play the song again. And then you'd like breathe new life into it. So it was, it was an experience. It was cool. Yeah. And it's, and it's fun. I mean, obviously after however many interviews I've done with people, um, part of it is the type of personality you have. Like some people do want to get locked in a room and, mm. and just, you know, even if it means, you know, 36 hours straight, get it done. Yeah. Nobody distract me, just get it done. And then mm. other folks like to leave what they're used to and go. Yeah. And, and like you said, um, I, I've seen it happen like literally in front of my eyes when you, either you get, you know, mentally burned out or, uh, you know, just nobody's coming up with, with a new thought and, uh, you know, th this tiny piece of music that you keep trying to work your way through, yeah. you, you know, nobody's thinking of anything new to try and try and bust through it. Yeah. Go take a walk. Yeah. Clear, everybody right. clear your head you come back and you go like, sure. there it is. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, it doesn't work for every project or every band or every album per se, but you know, doing certain types of records, like, yeah, in Jersey city at a studio, which I love and that experience was great. It wasn't the same release to walk down the street for 20 minutes in between takes, but you know, he takes you to uh big pink, for example, we mm -hmm. went to big pink in the middle of the day one day. And we went to Woodstock to pick up something that he needed and on the way stopped at Big Pink and then came back and did one more take of the song from scratch. And we were like, well, that's Purgatory Road. There's the title track of the album. Just kind of worked out that way. Um, we learned a lot of stuff that we still use. Things we took into recording our new album, whether it be ways of approaching editing songs in real time, cutting verses from things. Um, adding musical parts that were never in the plan originally, mm -hmm. but putting them in there. Um, or even something as, uh, you know, <laughs> something as like stereotypical as like burning Palo Santo and getting the room vibe to be correct. And, you know, he would lay on the couch and, and close his eyes and say, well, this is what Rick Rubin did when we did the Avid Brothers <laughs> album. So I'm just going to try this for an hour. Don't say anything for 20 minutes. We're just going to loop the song. And I just, we would sit there. And drink a gallon of water because it was also like 98 degrees with no air conditioning it was the middle of july but we learned a lot and i think it shows and uh we try to take that with us you know everything we do now even live on stage sure joe and james from mm -hmm. jackson pines here with us live on 90.5 the nights uh with me jeff raspy they are playing uh tuesday uh, yeah it's a tuesday night but you know it's a good night to go out and see the Felice Brothers along with Jackson Pines at Asbury Lanes in Asbury Park. If you live on the other side of the state, you may want to go Wednesday the 13th to 118 North in Wayne, PA. Uh, or if you're looking for a, uh, what will hopefully, fingers crossed, be a nice day out uh, Saturday the 16th in the afternoon at uh, Allaire State Park for the Allaire Jamboree. Uh, you guys are at three that day, but you, you said it starts at noon? Yeah, it starts at noon um, and it goes till three. And if it does rain that day, we have a tentative rain date of just the next day, the 17th. Ah, so okay. if it is a crappy day, we will, if it's nice the next day, just do it on Sunday instead. But 16th is locked in. Cool. Um, and then uh, the new album, Close to Home. Uh, so uh, you guys went back, to, well, if you made your first record with a guy like Simon Fleece, you didn't really go back to uh, ultra DIY working on your own, but you did do it ultra DIY on your own, semi remotely. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and some and some of it right there in the room that James sitting in. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing, all the instruments were recorded in the room that James sat in. Um, you know, most of it was done live, live takes. We were gonna redo all the vocals another day and it turned out the scratch takes were better than what I did the other day. So we actually kept the live, almost the whole album is live. Um, eight of the 12 songs were done live. Four of them were done from the acoustic guitar out. 
um, but a live take of me just playing it with James across the room, looking at each other like normal. Um, but yeah, you know, COVID. I mean, we could have made no record or we could have just figured it out. Um, it didn't make sense for us to get together with anyone that was very far away or anyone that we'd worked with before because right. people straight up said, I'm sorry, we can't. And that's totally fine. We respected that. Um, so we said, but we can't not make a record. We didn't make one in 2020 when we really wanted to. So we had to make one this year. So we figured out a way to do it. Once the science said you could quarantine and test, we went for it, like I said, after the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And then it was remotely post edited and then mixed and mastered and everything. And then we had to get back together in May and June and then, you know, learn how to play the record again and get it back together, which was a lot of fun. So we yeah, had a good funny. time doing that. I think over the uh, year and a half or, you know, by the end of it, it'll be probably two plus years. Um, a lot of folks have taken the time to, uh, how do I make a record without somebody else? Mm -hmm. I'm going to sit down and learn Pro Tools, you know, yep. <laughs> that kind of thing. And or, buy a nice mic for your, yeah. you know, and, and <laughs> or, get an interface instead of a regular rig, you know. Um, and we found that, you know, a lot of bands that we love and respect broke up because, a lot of bands when there wasn't a tour and there wasn't forward momentum and people realized they wanted to do other stuff, which yeah, I understand how that works. And then a lot of new bands were formed, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah. So and, and, and it's a beautiful you know, period. Yeah. So, I mean, certainly a lot of people, you know, in the, in the industry, but in the, the not on stage people, um, you know, I mean, like most musicians, none of them really had, you know, any insurance like i mean i i know yeah. i know a lot of people had a hard time even getting unemployment because you're a uh you're a, you're a contractor basically right. like you you didn't really have a job that you've lost you had right you, you know, have a w2 you had a, <laughs> you had a one, skill one zero nine nine yeah. yeah you had a skill and three or four sort of jobs that you couldn't really quantify to unemployment <laughs> to try and get unemployment insurance. But uh, um... well, that's what made us so happy was to finally start to play shows again. Started small. We played like a show at um, like Edison. No, it's not Edison. Sorry. Um, at Woodbridge High School. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just oh. great to see like two crew members, you know, like a stage guy, two audio engineers and a, and a handler for the main act. And I was like, wow, OK, it's starting to heal now. Three. And then we were lucky enough to play a really big concert a couple of weeks ago with a full main festival stage crew of like 20 guys and gals and everyone working again. And that was like almost it was kind of emotional to see because, you know, we could make ends meet even though it wasn't playing live music anymore. I was teaching music. James, mm -hmm. he welds with his family. But these folks didn't have that kind of thing in the background and to see them working again, everyone with their rigging harnesses on in their blacks. Uh, <laughs> it just was, it was just good to see them all joking around and, uh, you know, busting balls again, you know? <laughs> yeah. Joe and James from Jackson Pines here on 90.5 the night, uh, Tuesday, the 12th opening for the police brothers at Asbury lanes, Wednesday, the 13th, 118 North. Same thing. <laughs> 118 North in uh, uh, Wayne, PA, just outside Philadelphia. And then Saturday the 16th at the Allaire Jamboree at Allaire State Park. Uh, you guys have jacksonpines.com for any uh, updates and information. Uh, you've got, I was actually just looking at it. I think it's, I think you've got everything on Bandcamp. Uh, yeah, we have two full length albums, two EPs and a single on Bandcamp. That is, uh, the two full lengths are available as a digital download or a physical CD of either. And right now the EPs are still just, they're totally digital. Um, due to the vinyl shortage, we were going to press a couple mm -hmm. different things this year, but right now we're only going to press the new album. Um, but we have, yes, yeah, CDs of Purgatory Road and of Close to Home, the new album, as well as t-shirts as well. And soon we'll have a full line for fall with more t-shirt sizes, a hoodie and we'll have vinyl as soon as we can but it might be 2022 to be honest yeah absolutely yeah there i mean uh a warehouse in tennessee burnt down and literally we lost like our supply of vinyl so oh that's what happened like it's like there's it's so backed up 
It's crazy. I mean, it, it, get it's, in time. I mean, for the last couple of years, it's been backed up. Um, vinyl production schedules are, are so backed up that, um, and I think most people listening know that I also spend part of my time at Jack's music and Red Bank. And a lot of times there are, uh, vinyl LPs, new and old, that people are looking for. Sometimes it's a new release. Sometimes it's a uh, a big, you know, catalog release, and yeah. it's just out of stock for weeks at a time because it exactly. can't be made. Um, right. But I got the CDs though and shirts, so yeah, we got that covered, and we'll have a big a vinyl release party in early. 2022 but for now you know it's digital or it's like i've been saying we have gone back to that classic high quality compact disc sound that we all loved in Absolutely. the 90s and even though i love vinyl cds sound great if you can find a cd player that's yeah. the problem i that yeah uh, cds sound really really good actually <laughs> they do but it has gotten to the point where and and part of the blame goes to apple we're taking the disk drive out of the out of the max and they're out of the cars now and they're out of the Another. I, I, that can go on and on about that so <laughs> that's a different story i'll end up sounding like neil young throwing uh lost Throwing. file players at people yeah <laughs> which is known to do which the fleece brothers told us one time we just tossed like five of them at them in the studio when they were recording with connor oberst and they were like oh wow we got a free sonos or whatever whichever one it is um i forget which one but yeah, I don't remember which one. I'm all for lossless. I'm all for lossless files and higher quality, but so yes, CDs and digital downloads, <laughs> jacksonpines.com and Bandcamp and all that too. That's our main way we sell our music. It's Bandcamp. Absolutely. And uh, for anyone who uh, needs to uh, find out more about Jackson Pines, jacksonpines.com. Uh, looking forward to the Felice Brothers show at Asbury Lanes on Tuesday the twelfth with Jackson Pines, I believe. We here at 90.5 of the night have given away pairs of tickets for that show. So some of our some of our listeners slash winners will be there as well. Uh, I hope to be as well. Absolutely. Uh, you know, hey, see you there Tuesday, and Tuesday night might as well be Friday night for me. Yeah, Tuesday's a new Friday. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a good time and a year uh, in the making. Like I said. Mm. Their new album, it did, well, didn't exist when we first booked the show, and neither did ours. I, so. You know what? I actually just thought of that as I half-jokingly said a year in the making. They have a new album. You have mm -hmm. a new album. Neither one of them existed when the show was supposed to happen in it the first place. one of those inter-album concerts, which are fine, but this has some nice momentum. So, you know, just thank you so much for uh, having us on to talk about it. I appreciate it. No problem. Anytime. And uh, hopefully one of these days we'll we'll actually be able to invite you back into the studio in person Same. and uh and play a little yeah, music going. live oh, yeah. <laughs> as so, soon as we can we'll be there as soon as it's safe absolutely thanks a million as always joe and james from jackson pines here on 90.5 the night brookdale public radio Right. 
change my name with pencil point. Take my plans for the road to jump. Bury this, bury that. Take my coat, take my hat. Don't you see? You're never gonna bury me. I'm bury me. I come back like the sun, bones and ash and a heart that hung. Though you see, you never gonna bury me. Bury her, bury him, we will all rise up again. Don't you see, you never gonna bury me. So you see, you never gonna bury me.